Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Sosinski, and I'm the Executive Medical Director of the Advent Health Cancer Institute in Orlando, Florida. Welcome to this module on concurrent chemo radiation therapy, the standard of care in unresectable stage three non-small cell lung cancer. This presentation is supported by AstraZeneca, and this presentation is intended to provide educational information on the importance of concurrent chemoradiotherapy as the standard of care for patients with unresectable stage three disease. The presentation does not discuss or promote any investigation or approved drugs, and does not refer to drugs by their brand name or commercial entities. The program is not a CME program. We'll start with a case, and this is management of stage 3C disease. This was an elderly uh, smoker who presented with weight loss, but had normal pulmonary function. You can see he's uh, 75 years old, current smoker, about a 60-pack year exposure. Married, lives with his spouse. Um, History, he really doesn't have much in the way of uh, other comorbid disease, and his performance status is said to be a ECOG uh, performance status of one. Uh, he reported the weight loss. A CT scan was ordered based on uh, this finding, and it demonstrated a right lower lobe mass. A PET scan was also ordered. We see here to the imaging uh, with the PET scan showed the primary tumor. that was actually quite large, as well as nodal involvement. Um, shown uh, on the arrows. Following the PET scan, the patient underwent uh, an EBUS. Um, the histology was shown to be squamous. Um, the brain MRI, appropriately done, did not show any evidence of disease. Uh, molecular testing, because of the squamous results, was not performed, as well as the stage uh, um, not performed. PDL1 was said to be 30%. The patient's final stage after the non-invasive PET scan as well as EBUS procedure uh, was a T4 N3. Uh, this was felt to be unresectable due to the N3 multiple nodal involvement in a large uh, primary tumor that was quite close to the esophagus. Patient's uh, treatment plan is shown here. The patient received chemotherapy concurrent with radiotherapy. Radiotherapy plays a critically important part in the management of these unresectable patients. Uh, obviously, the art of radiotherapy is to completely cover the tumor volume with the appropriate dose, but minimize the dose that goes to normal structures, such as the lung, the esophagus, the heart, the spinal cord, and so on and so forth. And you can see that because of the large size of the tumor, as well as the mediastinal involvement in this case, that esophagitis was uh, anticipated uh, as a likely uh, toxicity given this radiotherapy plan. Treatment in this setting in unresectable stage three non-small cell lung cancer is delivered with curative intent. Curative intent really begins with concurrent chemoradiotherapy. We have seen over the past decade or so that the um, use of chemoradiotherapy has improved outcomes. You can see the figures for 2010 with approximately 16% five-year survival and a median overall survival of 17 months when concurrent chemoradiotherapy was used. In 2017, we see improvements with the same strategy. In this case, a 32% five-year overall survival, now with a median overall survival of 28.7 months. But despite this progress, so greater than 50% of patients will progress to stage four metastatic non-small cell with chemoradiotherapy alone. This trial uh, investigated the use of what is considered standard dose radiotherapy, which is 60 gray, versus high dose radiotherapy, um, in this case, 74 gray. Uh, these strategies were delivered with concurrent chemoradiotherapy. <clears throat> These are the uh, long-term results of RTOG 0617. And as a surprise to many of us, uh, the 74 gray or higher dose, a more aggressive dose, actually led to a poor outcome significantly uh, compared to 60 gray. So based on this trial, 60 gray remains the standard of care in this population uh, given concurrently with chemotherapy. Now, there have been advances in radiation therapy that have really made it easy, easier for us medical oncologists to deliver concurrent chemoradiotherapy with reduced toxicity and hopefully increased efficacy. Uh, things such as three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy 
as well as intensity, intensity modulated radiotherapy or IMRT. So these techniques are really trying to um, accomplish what I said before is target the tumor with the appropriate dose, but reduce the uh, dose that normal tissue in the chest gets during the course of radiotherapy. Proton therapy, I would consider a new technique under investigation in this setting. Now, the use of the new technology, in this case IMRT, may be associated with reduced toxicity compared to three-dimensional uh, 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 radiotherapy. You can see here a very nice uh, report of the incidence of grade two or greater treatment-related toxicity by a radiotherapy technique. Esophagitis to the left, esophageal stricture in the middle, and the pneumonitis to the right. Pneumonitis, you don't see much of a difference, but certainly you do see a big difference in the rate of esophageal toxicity, both with regard to acute esophagitis as well as esophageal uh, stricture. So again, uh, reduced incidence of treatment-related toxicity with the appropriate RT planning and delivery uh, does, I think, um, allow greater compliance uh, to the concurrent chemoradiotherapy strategy. And we think that um, the proper delivery of concurrent chemoradiotherapy, as well as completion of radiotherapy on time, leads to better outcomes. You see to the left here, comparing patients that had missed chemotherapy during concurrent chemoradiotherapy uh, was associated with a poor survival, uh, as you can see again to the left, and then to, to the right, uh, if patients had a more prolonged radiation treatment time during concurrent chemoradiotherapy, that this was associated with increased mortality. Here we have a slide depicting the chemotherapy, uh, radiotherapy-related adverse events that may uh, prevent patients from receiving uh, concurrent chemoradiotherapy with curative intent. Uh, you can see the common toxicity shown here, esophageal toxicity in the form of esophagitis, anorexia, nausea, fatigue. Uh, early identification in appropriate, I say, prospective management of chemo re radiotherapy-related toxicities, I think do improve patient tolerance, compliance, and outcomes if the treatment is able to be delivered as planned. As esophagitis is really the primary toxicity we deal with uh, during the course of concurrent uh, chemo radiotherapy, it's important to appreciate the management um, of this uh, number one toxicity. This typically begins about two weeks into treatment. Uh, patients may um, initially experience a little bit of stickiness when they swallow. That may progress to painful swallowing. This can obviously lead to decreased oral intake, uh, poor nutrition, uh, inadequate hydration. A critical aspect uh, to managing this uh, adverse event is uh, starts with educating the patients. Let them know that this is the number one risk. Uh, let them know what the symptoms may be. They should tell us uh, or be informed to tell their multidisciplinary team when they start to feel something different in their esophagus when they uh, swallow. Uh, there are lots of management strategies. Obviously, uh, patients are coming to treatment centers daily for radiation, weekly for chemotherapy. IV fluids can be administered to maintain their hydration status. Uh, they can get um, uh, uh, topical soothants, uh, anesthetics for the esophagus to make it less painful when they're swallowing. Proton pump inhibitors uh, can be helpful in ameliorating the pain and, and good pain control for these sorts of things. Some dietary uh, changes uh, may be appropriate for certain patients and one should consult a nutritionist to help the support uh, palliative care uh, team can also be very helpful in managing these uh, symptoms. Again, it starts with education about the signs and symptoms, anticipate it and manage it prospectively rather than let the patient have the adverse event. It's very difficult to uh, get back once you've had esophageal toxicity. It's best to try to manage it, prevent it, ameliorate it, minimize it as best we can. Same with fatigue. Uh, this is another common symptom with patients that um, are started on combined chemoradiotherapy. Uh, the signs and symptoms are listed there. Uh, the management, um, it's important to, again, prospectively manage these patients, uh, give them general guidance prior to starting that fatigue may be an issue. Uh, one needs to be um, cognizant of other issues of fatigue. Uh, very commonly, depression can be an early sign 
uh, or manifested by fatigue, anemia, uh, nutritional deficiencies, these sorts of things. And again, uh, these should be anticipated and managed prospectively to minimize uh, the severity of the fatigue. And then I mentioned proper hydration. I think this is um, something that's critically important uh, to maintaining patients, their overall well-being. Um, uh, also proper nutrition, uh, so you can minimize weight loss uh, during um, the uh, course of treatment. Again, it's important to say to patients, we can help you if you aren't keeping up with your hydration and fluids. But we can also uh, help you with nutrition by consulting a nutritionist that's uh, skilled at managing patients uh, through uh, this uh, time period. Um, and really, these are strategies that should be part of the multidisciplinary team to get patients through that six to seven weeks of uh, combined chemo radiotherapy in a, and be as fit as they possibly can at the end of treatment. So getting back to our case, um, again, this uh, patient did develop esophageal toxicity. It was felt to be grade three. Um, it happened during the last couple weeks of treatment. It was managed appropriately and uh, was improved, somewhat lasted about three weeks. Remember this esophageal toxicity will get better once chemo radiotherapy uh, is over. In terms of side effect management, hydration, magic mouthwash, proton pump inhibitors, pain strategies are all critically important to ameliorate the symptoms of esophagitis with proper management. I think you can minimize it. In this patient's case, uh, the patient was able to maintain uh, their performance status uh, during chemo radiotherapy based on prospective uh, supportive care uh, for the most common toxicity we see, esophageal toxicity, uh, in this setting. So in summary, uh, the uh, treatment of patients with unresectable stage three non-small cells should be done with curative intent using concurrent chemo radiotherapy. And this is really the foundation for the survival gains that we've seen over the past couple of decades. Flexibility in tailoring of chemotherapy regimens may help reduce treatment-related toxicities and um, enable patients to complete on time, and that's important. Certainly, there have been uh, technological advances in radiotherapy techniques, uh, 3D, IMRT, um, and these are associated with a better safety profile, and we think being able to deliver the mortality on time uh, an improved uh, outcome for patients. You shouldn't underestimate the adverse events that can occur. They should be anticipated. Patients should be educated about them. Uh, our goal is to prevent treatment interruptions and treatment discontinuations uh, because we know uh, that uninterrupted concurrent chemo radiotherapy is critical to give the patient the best chance of the optimal patient outcome. So active surveillance and management of these adverse events associated with this uh, concurrent chemo radiotherapy, I think does facilitate uh, improved treatment compliance, which uh, ultimately gives the patient the best chance to have the best outcome uh, in this particular situation.